centres on the 2015 migration crisis, which you all remember was the moment when Angela Merkel massively exacerbated an already existing problem by announcing unilaterally that the external and internal borders of Europe were basically dissolved. Uh, in, a, in a single uh, act, the mass movement of people that had been going on for decades sped up exponentially so that Germany in a single year took in an additional 2% of its population, uh, that Sweden took in an additional almost 3% of its population. This is all part of a pattern, I say, that has been going on for many decades. And just like those previous decades, what happened after the 2015 crisis was that politicians and the media found excuses to justify something that would have happened anyway. So, for instance, German citizens and others were told that they actually, this mass migration, millions of people into Europe, was a, would be a net economic gain for their society. Hey, Veracity, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl, Bruno, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, guys, I'm going to be reacting to Modern Wisdom, and we have the one Douglas Murray video they don't want you to watch. Wow. The one Douglas Murray video they don't watch. You should watch. Maybe picking out soon. All right. Let's see what this is about. Before we get started, we have some amazing people watching us for the first time. If you're new to the channel, I am Vera. I do reaction videos. This is that you love. Why not join Vera City? You subscribe button below. Turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys. Let's go. That it would enrich their society. Hmm. Now, actually, all of the studies that I've gone over in this show that, at best, most uh, such migration cannot be called to be any kind of economic gain. A study in Britain showed that over a 15-year period, migrants took out 95 billion more in, in services than they put in in taxation. And of course they would. If you go to another country, you don't speak the language, you don't have the skills, it's going to be a very long time before you've put in anything into the welfare system remotely like the amount that you and your family will have taken out. But this is one of the arguments that are made. And by the way, just as in uh, the, all of the decades after the war, so in the post-2015 uh, moment, the governments that came up with these explanations had to hedge around the facts so that just like the Labour government after 1997, they had to pretend that the average migrant was a Luxembourgian hedge funder. <laughs> and this, this is just one of the lies that gets told to the people. As Douglas Murray points out, politicians often claim that an influx of immigrants will fill labour shortages increase the tax base, and contribute to economic growth. However, the reality is more complex. Many immigrants, particularly those who arrive without skills or language proficiency, rely heavily on social services when they first arrive. This reliance can persist for years, creating a significant burden on the host country's welfare system. A study conducted in the United Kingdom found that immigrants from outside the European economic area had a net fiscal cost meaning they consumed more in public services and benefits than they contributed in taxes. Specifically, over a 17-year period, non-EEA immigrants cost the UK government approximately £118 billion. This figure contrasts sharply with the positive fiscal contributions from EEA immigrants, who were more likely to be employed and contribute positively to the economy. Economists and analysts have echoed Murray's skepticism. Professor Paul Collier, a leading development economist argues that large-scale immigration can have adverse effects on the economy, particularly when the migrant skill levels do not match the needs of the host country. Collier emphasizes that while immigration can be beneficial under certain conditions, it must be managed carefully to avoid negative fiscal impacts and social strain. Because once that one is shot down, once, for instance, you notice that the, the number of people who've been added to Germany's welfare bill in the last year is almost exactly the number of the people who came in in 2015. Once, once you go over that lie, you get to another one, which the German people and others were told, which is that we are an aging population. We are a greying population. And that therefore we need, obviously, to bring people in to keep us and our society into the standards to which we've become accustomed. Of course, 
this argument always ignores one extraordinary thing which none of the politicians ever seem to be able to recognize, which is the startling fact that migrants get old as well. <laughs> It's, amazingly enough, it's not just us Europeans who suffer the aging process. <laughs> who knew? <laughs> but of course, if you do believe in that idea, that you need to keep on bringing people to keep yourself in the, cu in the, in the custom that you're now used to, you get what I describe as the pyramid problem in migration. You keep having to bring in more and more people all the time to keep yourselves in that uh, a, a sustainable uh, societal moment. But so, so if you, once you get the one of, well, okay, maybe they don't make us richer, maybe uh, the aging population thing uh, doesn't work, you get to another one, which is diversity. It doesn't matter if we're financially poorer. It doesn't matter because we're so much more culturally rich. Yes. Now, I should say that there is something in this. What society, the Europeans certainly wouldn't do, is what society doesn't want to know as much of interest and culture as the world has to offer. Who, who doesn't want to know as much about the world and about the ideas of the world as possible? But, of course, the first person from, for instance, India to bring Indian cuisine into the UK does an interesting service, vims up the local cuisine. It's not the case that the next hundred Indians who come in, for instance, bring a hundred times more interesting cuisine. It's not the case that the first Sudanese poet who enters the UK massively brings interest to your country and that the next thousand people from Sudan continue to just bring ever richer versions of the poetry of Sudan. <laughs> and by the way, please don't ask me to name my favourite Sudanese poet. <laughs> Politicians frequently argue that bringing in people from different cultural backgrounds enriches society by introducing new perspectives, traditions, and innovations. While cultural diversity can have positive aspects, it is not without significant challenges and potential downsides, especially when not managed properly. First, one of the primary issues with cultural diversification through uncontrolled immigration is the strain it can place on social cohesion. Societies function best when there is a shared sense of values and common identity, Rapid and large-scale immigration can disrupt this balance, leading to fragmentation and a lack of social unity. For instance, when different cultural groups maintain separate identities and values, it can result in parallel societies within the same country. This is evident in parts of Europe where significant immigrant populations live in segregated communities with little interaction with the native population, leading to misunderstandings, distrust, and even conflict. In Germany, a study by the Friedrich Ebert Foundation found that areas with high concentrations of immigrants experienced more social tension and lower levels of social trust. This is partly due to the fact that cultural differences can exacerbate feelings of exclusion and alienation among both immigrants and native citizens. Additionally, a report by the Pew Research Center showed that public opinion in many European countries has become increasingly critical of immigration, with concerns about the impact on national identity and social cohesion. Cultural diversification can also pose economic challenges. While diverse workforces can bring new ideas and drive innovation, they can also lead to workplace conflicts and communication barriers. For example, a study by the Harvard Business Review found that cultural diversity in the workplace can be a double-edged sword. While it can enhance creativity and problem-solving, it can also lead to misunderstandings and conflict if not managed properly. Companies often have to invest significantly in training and team building to ensure that diverse teams function effectively. This is, this is just, just a part of that lie. They also say, you also notice, by the way, that this is always a one-way street. Not once in my adult life have I heard anybody say that the thing that Eritrea needs most is an injection of Welshman. <laughs> They just could do with some Welsh cooking. <laughs> or singing. <laughs> nobody says this. Nobody says, as uh, Mark Stein and I were saying in a conversation recently, nobody says, you know, the thing that the Somalis really need is a bit more Bach. <laughs> I actually think it'd be nice for them if they had a bit more Bach. But, but nobody thinks that's an appropriate way to say it. But Europeans are told there's something hollow at our heart, as if we in Europe 
the culture of Dante and Goethe and Bach <laughs> has some kind of diminishment, something hollow at its centre that needs filling by the world. And then you get to a, another stage in this, which is, okay, maybe it doesn't make you richer. Maybe the ageing population thing does fall apart. Maybe the diversity thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. Or, as I put it at one point in my book, maybe we have to just do an agreement this is a quid pro quo. We, we have a bit more gang rape and beheading than we used to have, but then there's a wider, a wider range of cuisines, so who's to... <laughs> Life's all swings and roundabouts, so... Um, but then you get to the last stage of that, which is the one that politicians now say and speak to us about, which is, OK, maybe none of these things are the case. Well, suck it up. This is globalisation. This is going to happen anyway. This is a hell of a way to speak to the general public about their and their children's future. And it is only said, once again, to the peoples of Europe in this tone. Thank you, Douglas Murray, for being our voice. Douglas Murray, one thing I love about him is that he always say the truth. He always say facts. He would always say the truth. That is one thing I love about him. Glass Murray is bold, is brave, and is so intelligent. I am honestly so glad that he is addressing this issue. I mean, he brilliantly explained what many of us we see, but we are not brave enough to see. I love how he spoke with such clarity. This man speaks so much sense. I wonder how the government doesn't figure these things out. We need more Douglas Murray. Today. Immigration should be limited. Who actually benefits from immigration? Democracy cannot survive without accountability. What are your takes on this? What do you guys think about this video? Drop your comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up and please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, join Vera City. Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.